Today, we're going to begin our very first clay project, which is creating a clay mug. Now, this clay mug that you're looking at came from my kitchen cabinet. It was not made by me, but it was purchased at a store. A lot of the cups and mugs that you drink out of at your own home are made out of the same supply that we are going to be using. We will be using clay. Once the clay has dried and hardened, we're going to be placing it in an oven just for clay that's called a kiln. Once it comes out of the kiln, it will be really hard and bright white. That's when we add the shine that you see here on my mug. That's called glaze. Glaze will cover the mug completely except the very rim at the bottom. You'll learn much more about that later. But first, let's talk about this mug. Mugs have a base or a bottom. They have the open part that's called the vessel, and they also have a handle. The cool thing about mugs is they're just like people. They come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes, but each one is outstanding, amazing, and unique. So be thinking about what kind of shape you might want for your mug. We're going to be using clay, like I said, for our mug. Clay is made out of two ingredients. It's made out of water and dirt. That's the base right there. That's what we're going to be starting with first. Then we will be making it taller by using coils. And of course, we have to have a handle. If it doesn't have a handle, well, then it's just a cup. All right, let's dive in and get started. The first thing we're going to do is take a small piece of clay like this. Like I said, it's just made out of water and dirt, comes straight from the earth. To create the base or the bottom of the mug, we have to start with something called a pinch pot. So you'll want to take your piece of clay and shape it into a sphere. Look at my hands. They are pressing towards each other and they are also, at the same time, creating a circle. And as I'm pressing my hands toward each other like I'm clapping and rolling them or moving them like in the shape of a circle, I'm creating a sphere. You could do that with your two hands coming together like they're clapping, or you could use your clay mat by just pressing down and notice how I'm making a circle as I roll with my hands. It doesn't have to be perfect, but once you're finished, you're going to place that sphere right smack dabity doo in the middle of the palm of your hand. Good job. Give yourself a thumbs up. Now take that thumb, press it into the middle of the sphere, wrap your fingers around the back, and you are going to squeeze your thumb as hard as you can toward the fingers in the back. Now, you want to make sure your thumb doesn't go all the way through because we're not making donuts. You just want to make it so it looks like your thumb has a really big hat. Pluck that little hat off of your thumb and you have the beginning of a pinch pot, a vessel. A vessel is something that can hold something. But this pinch pot is a little too small and also a little thick. Look at the rim of my cup. It's not too thick. Its thickness is about that of a cookie. And that's what we are going for. So I will be pinching my clay so that it gets thinner like a cookie. To pinch it, I bring out my hand like a quacking duck, and my quacking duck fingers will squeeze the clay, thinking about that cookie thickness. I don't want to squeeze it too much. That might put a hole in my clay. And I don't want to leave it too thick, because thick clay can actually explode in the kiln, which sounds really cool, unless it's your clay project. And as I'm going now, I'm just checking for the thickness. I'm using my hands like something called calipers. Calipers measure the thickness of something. And I want the thickness to be the same all the way around. If your clay starts to crack or gets a little dry, it just means it's thirsty. It's running out of that water. So just dip your finger in the water and rub it on the cracks to smooth it out. Now that you've got your pinch pot made, you might notice it's a little bit weeble wobbly. We can't have a wobbly mug. So gently tap it one, two, three times to make sure that it's nice and stable. Again, if you have any cracks, just take your finger and smooth it out. Now look at the rim. It's a little uneven, so you can flip it over and tap it three times on the rim too. And that's how you make a pinch pot. Now I made that look really easy, but I've had a lot of practice. So let's talk about those steps again. The first step was to roll it into a sphere, place it in the palm of your hands. Good job, thumbs up. Put your thumb on the sphere, wrap your fingers around the back and squeeze until your thumb has a really weird hat. Pluck the hat off and now you're going to pinch around the vessel. 
But what if your quacking duck that you're using gets a little bit hungry and pinches your pinch pot just too much? And instead of being a pinch pot, it becomes a pinch plate. Here's how you can fix it. You could roll it up and try it again or tear the clay a little bit and overlap the clay and then smooth it out. On the exact opposite side, make a little tear in the clay, overlap a little bit, and smooth it out. Don't forget to tap the rim a little bit and tap the bottom a little bit so that it's not weeble wobbly. Okay, there, it's all fixed. One more time, go through those steps, roll a sphere, good job, thumbs up, thumb on top, fingers around the back, what is that thing on your thumb? Take it off, and now let's talk about another mistake some people make. Instead of using a quacking duck, they use a little tiny chirp, and the little tiny chirp makes little tiny pinches, and that is just too delicate for your pinch pot. Your rim of your pinch pot needs to be as thick as a cookie. So if you pinch too thin, you could roll it up and try again or just bend the clay over a little bit. No chirping birds, but a big quacking duck. Make sure that it quacks and as it quacks, it's checking the thickness. It needs to be the same thickness all the way around. If you finish your pinch pot today, congratulations, that's awesome. Now you can move on to the next step, which is making your mug taller. For that, you're going to be creating coils. Pinch off a piece of clay and roll a sphere. Once you have a sphere, you're going to change the directions that you roll the clay. Instead of rolling a circle, you're rolling up and down your hands. Go all the way up to your fingertips and all the way down to the bottom. Place the coil on your mat. Use one hand to hold your mat still, and you'll want to roll pretty far up to the top of the mat before bringing your hand back down. As you're rolling your coil up and down your mat, you'll need to keep checking it. It needs to be the same thickness all the way across. If you roll too much in one space, your coil might break. That's an easy fix. Just overlap the clay and roll it up and down the mat again. I made that look really easy. Let's talk about some things that might happen when you try making your coil. If you don't roll your coil up to the top of the mat and to the bottom, you might end up with a bit of a flat tire. So make sure that you roll all the way up the mat and bring your coil all the way back down. And remember to check it all the way across because you want it to be the same thickness. It should be as thick as your finger just like that. Sometimes people roll their coils too thick, and then other times people roll their coils too thin. Clay that is too thick can explode in the kiln. Clay that's too thin like that could actually break before it even gets to the kiln. Once you have a coil that's the right thickness, you're going to need to attach it to your base. For that, you're going to use a toothbrush, I know. The reason we use a toothbrush is because it scratches into the clay. The scratches of the toothbrush create something called scoring, which helps to really glue my clay pieces together. And the water also acts a little bit like glue. You could call it slip. Now there is going to be a little bit of a gap in some places and you'll wanna make sure to fill those with more coils of clay. So you're going to get really good at rolling coils. In fact, sometimes people roll a whole bunch of coils before putting them all together on their mug. What I like to do is make sure that there's a little bit of an overlap of the coils because if it's one thing you wanna make sure that your mug doesn't have, it's holes. Nobody wants to be drinking out of a leaky mug. So you'll wanna make sure to have that clay overlap one angle to another. I smoothed it down right there to create an angle. And when I get ready to add the next, I'll pinch it on the end to create another angle to lock them in place. Any time that you add another coil of clay, you always have to toothbrush or slip and score. Think of it this way. If you don't brush your teeth, your teeth are gonna fall out of your head. And if you don't toothbrush these clay pieces together, they won't stick and they could fall apart. If you decide to use two hands when rolling a coil, your hands have to go in the same direction, up and down. If they go in the opposite direction, the clay will tear. You can use as much clay as you need to make your mug as tall as you like. 
the taller that you make it, the more it will be able to hold. So that's something to think about. It's really up to you. Just don't forget all of the important steps. Now, right now I have a cup. I'm not making a cup though. I'm making a mug, which means it needs a handle. I'm going to add one more layer to make it just as tall as I would like to hold all of the drinks and things that I want to keep in it before adding the handle. Now the handle is pretty important. It cannot be as thin as the coils that you've been creating because it needs to be strong enough to hold the entire weight, not only of the mug, but what you put in it. But before working on your handle, you'll want to make sure that your mug is leak proof. So notice I have one hand on the outside of the mug as I smooth out the inside, making sure I have no holes for leaks. Now that I have my mug as tall as I'd like it to be, I'm ready to add that handle. So I'm going to take a piece of clay and begin a coil, but I'm not going to roll it thin. It needs to be nice and thick so that it's strong enough to hold the weight of the mug as well as anything I put inside it. So I can't have a thin coil. It just wouldn't be strong enough. I'm going to roll it a little bit and now I'm going to take my fingers and press it flat. That looks like a pretty good strong thickness. It could be a curve like a letter C, but that looks a little too big. You could cut the clay smaller with a little stick to cut the clay, or if you wanna be fancy, you could even roll the end. Make sure you lay it on your mug to see if you like how it looks before you toothbrush. Don't forget, if you don't use your toothbrush, your clay pieces might fall off. I'm going to hold my fingers on the outside of the mug while I smush and smear the clay to really get the handle to stay. And then I will do something similar on the outside. What I don't want you to do is try to pick up your mug just yet. Don't pick it up by the handle. Because the clay hasn't been fired, it's very weak. And even though you've made a nice strong handle, it won't be able to hold the mug. All right, I'm excited to see how your clay mug turns out.